Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Testament Tuesday, and today we have the wonderful, the lovely Mari. <laughs> Hi. This is Mari, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Dude, it's, I've been trying to get you on this pod. Well, okay. We've been trying <laughs> to coordinate our schedules to get you on the podcast oh, yeah. <laughs> for a hot minute. At least a couple weeks. Yeah. A hot minute. Or you months. Like a hot hour. Yeah. Or like years. <laughs> Honestly. I've been waiting my entire life for this one moment. <laughs> actually, little known fact, Mari and I actually met each other. <laughs> what was that? Like seven or eight years yeah, ago? I, was like, I think we're hitting up seven years now. You were like in high school. Yeah. I was entering my sophomore year of high school and now I'm a sophomore in like college. So get this. So I'm in South Louisiana as a missionary and Mari's high school. I remember there was this group from Dallas coming. I was so excited that I would finally be around other Texans. Cause I'd been living in South Louisiana for far too long <laughs> and I had to lead a trip and we were building a putt putt golf course <laughs> In like a really weird area of like, like an old abandoned a dilapidated school. <laughs> condemned school. And we're like, we're going to make a putt putt like little area for the kids out of cement and here's like a bunch of like hey, 15 year olds we pulled it off though it it was really awesome I mean, it was like it great. was a lot of work but we pulled oh, off for sure putt putt course but like we met and we were like spent a whole day together and like literally the lord was like psych you're gonna meet this woman again yeah. and you're gonna love her so much it's crazy there's pictures of us together from all those years ago yeah and now we look back and we're like wow we knew each other <laughs> yeah but anyways thank you so much everyone for tuning in for those who are tuning in for the first time testament tuesday is where people can come and share their story to give god the glory so <laughs> today we're gonna be joining mari as we go along on this journey of the story of your life oh my gosh so Sounds start us at the beginning <laughs> oh in the beginning well it's like a daunting. My life is like in 20 years, it's like so much has happened, but I can start it off with saying that, um, I grew up in a cradle Catholic home. Like I have two loving parents and then I have a younger brother and he and I are actually 16, 17 months apart. So wow. we're like, yeah, we're really close in age. My parents were like, if we don't get another one in, like, we're not going to like get another one. Mm -hmm. Uh, because my parents were like 30. Well, my mom was 34 when she had me. So they were a little bit later, but like she's, she didn't care. Um, they just wanted kids and mm -hmm. lo and behold here I came into the world um, with so much love like I absolutely adore my parents I like just got off the phone with my mom last night and we were just like great but I grew up in a really wonderfully Catholic home went to mass every Sunday um, did the whole shebang like their faith life is radiant it's beautiful but it didn't always like reflect like how I felt I was just like okay, we're going like, this is, this mm -hmm. is chill. This is fine. And that was a lot of me growing up. Like, okay, I'm here for like a small group aspect. Like I'm here just to hang out with other kids that I can talk to or eat snacks with. Like it was like, whatever I felt like, but never on the Lord, mm. even though my parents tried and tried again. Like, you know, like they're great people, but they're also human. Like they can't give me this relationship with the Lord. Like I have to develop that on my own. Right. So here I am, like a little, uh, like flash forward a couple of years, right? And here I am, uh, an eighth grader going on their confirmation retreat. And like, that's, you kind of get to decide, like, do I want to be Catholic? Mm. And that was all I knew. Like, I grew up in like, you know, North Dallas, like suburbs type of area. And like, I knew a lot of people that like went to my church and I was like friends with them and we were all like hanging out. And I was like eating Oreos on this retreat. And I was like, yeah, why not? Like, let's do this. There's Oreos. Of course I'll be Catholic. <laughs> I was, I you show like, up with Oreos. <laughs> I'm in. Honestly, I was there for the social aspect. Like I yeah. did not really care. I was like, well, I know Jesus. I know of him and I love him and I know he loves me. So like we're homies now, like it's fine. Mm -hmm. And I'll go through this whole confirmation process and I'll be Catholic for the rest of my life. Like that's such a big decision for an eighth grader. And I just kind of like went through the motions, right? Um, so I did it. I was like, okay, cool. And then in high school, we had like a youth group type of thing. It's like similar to Life Teen, but we called it Rise. Uh, so it's just okay. like youth group after mass on Sundays. And I was just there for the social aspect. There were like good talks. There was like music and like praise and worship. And there was like food. Sometimes we'd have pizza. Sometimes we'd have like whatever, like snacks. tacos. Yeah, there, mm. there was tacos one time. There's just like a lot. It was like great. And it was great to like form like friendships and like get to know other Catholic students and like have that friendship and the solid foundation and have like for sure like mission not missionaries but like the ministry like leaders like they had like adults there to guide you and like older like students sometimes were there um but I was just there for the social aspect I was like I'm fed this is like I have nothing else to do Sunday nights like why not 
Um, and then I just got along with a lot of people. I've always been really personable. I love talking to people. I love just like mm -hmm. having a good conversation, you know? Hugs. You also like hugs. Yeah, that is my big love language. <laughs> and that's what like I got used to like getting that affection. Like I got that at like this yeah. like youth group, right? And so I was offered or like told about this whole like youth leadership program where we got to be like youth leaders, like high school, like kind of leaders within the community. Um, and so I applied, I was like, cool, this is chill. And so I kind of did my thing. I helped teach middle schoolers as a sophomore in high school. It was chill. Like they were middle schoolers. What can you do? <laughs> and we had like three different, like other, like two different other ministries. There were three of us. And then we did like, you know, leadership within, uh, and forming like testimonies with other high schoolers. And then we had like another team that did like social media and like Instagram posts and like did art and like the banners for everything. Right. And so I was like, okay, going through the motions, I like had so much like relied onto mm -hmm. this community. Right. And my junior year rolls around and I applied and I was like, I'm a shoe in like everyone knows me. I know everyone. It's like, whatever. I didn't get in. Oh. Yeah. And it's oh. like, <laughs> I was so stupid cause I got really mad. Like I was livid. Anybody and everybody knew I was like, really really angry and I was like am I not a good Catholic like they're just ripping away this community from me I quit theater I quit you know like these other extracurriculars that like aren't glorifying the Lord like I just did I dropped everything to be in this community right or to be part of this like thing that like basically I was just trying to self-glorify and like mm -hmm. and make it about myself like I'm important I'm a youth leader I'm part of this group right so I didn't get in uh, obviously because I just relied my faith on this group of people and not within the Lord and so they were like, we still want to do discipleship with you. Like we want one of the ministry, like the youth ministers to actually one-on-one -on -one disciple you for the rest of the year instead of, you know, you being in youth leadership, just like your junior mm -hmm. year. And I went, but I'm not a, a youth leader. Like, what am I? Mm -hmm. And I got like really like annoyed and like offended almost. Like I have one, I have to do like one-on-one -on -one tutoring because I'm like a bad Catholic. Well, no, that's not how the Lord like was working. I would say um, it took me six months, like six solid months of me being angry to like one day flip the switch. I had a great relationship with my discipleship, um, like discipler, I would say. Um, and her and I are still really good friends. Honestly, we're so alike. And it hit me one day. We were like chilling at a Starbucks, like having our meeting. And, sh and I was like, you know, Jenny, I think the Lord was trying to say something in not... Um, like putting my identity within a group, even though it's like based on like the Lord, like I wasn't talking to him. We never talked. I never had a relationship with him one-on-one. -on -one. It was just based on this group thinking it was God and like putting that in the place of it. And she went, finally, we've been hoping for the past six months for you to get this. Like the Lord was like calling us to like set that time to personally like develop that relationship with like you and him. And you finally get it now. Like, where do wow. we go from here? Yeah. <laughs> it was like crazy because it was like discernment on both parts. And I obviously wasn't actually discerning because I wasn't like considering the Lord when I was like doing this whole leadership program. And I was like, oh, crap. Like, this is what I should be doing. What, what, like, I've been blind my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so that was like my junior year of high school. Like, I really like delve into like, okay, what does the Lord look like? What is my identity? And I still like was figuring that out. You know, I've always had like really bad self-esteem issues. I like for the longest time, I just like was not comfortable in my body. I mean, mm -hmm. as a woman, like that's sometimes really hard as well yeah. being compared and like having this like ideal femininity within the church. Sometimes mm -hmm. like you compare yourself to every girl who comes in and you're like, Oh my gosh, she's so like pure and she's so like funny and she's so like holy. And like you compare yourself. And I still was doing that almost every day when I was like still working on my relationship with the Lord. So I like, I was like, well, let's, let's do this. Like I have nothing else to lose. Senior year rolled around, I ended up um, joining like the leadership team again, but in a different aspect, I did their art department kind of social media part. Oh, fun. It was really fun. Yeah, I got like fun. into it. I was like, oh, creative. And I've always been creative. So I was like, all right, let's kind of see where like we can glorify you in that. And it was a really big eye opener to start learning that like in the everyday and like my skills and my talents and my hobbies, I can glorify the Lord like no matter mm -hmm. what. So that was a really big hitter. And then I went to college and things kind of went around uh, a little weirdly and a little differently. It was a rough, rough, like first semester, first kind of year ish. Mm -hmm. um, I like, um, unfortunately, like had to go through like a lot of just like emotional, like just and mental like problems. And I like was really weird. I was like, why am I 
like going through this and i essentially just like was still like not acknowledging the lord like i lived in the dorm right in front of the church mind you like i was just a street like (laughs) a little two minute walk it's like right across the street yeah Yeah, and i was like going and i was doing it and i still yet again fell into this idea of this community that like i love my community and that's what like god is like god is for me that is what like the lord is for me and i had to like reset everything and like fully learn to like trust in the lord because i am not capable of dealing with this life you know and i don't think anyone really is it's like and we acknowledge like how important and vital community is in the spiritual Mm -hmm. life but the great danger that we run into is like and i know this is true for for me but like Mm -hmm. i can make an idol out of anything oh for sure you know and even something that's good like something like a good community can quickly become an idol Mm -hmm. if i root my identity in that community instead of in christ and so it's like a very slippery slope almost because you don't even see yourself slipping because you're like, oh, well, I'm involved in community. And yeah. It's a good community. It's good people. Like I'm involved in every single thing. Like I'm a good Catholic. Yeah. And yet yeah. I was suffering so much. Mm-hmm. Like I was not at a healthy place physically or mentally or anything. And so I was just like, OK, let's let's rewind here. Um, so thankfully, I was getting involved with the bobcat awakening retreats and those were like good eye openers they weren't like the pinnacle like change like oh my goodness gracious Mm -hmm. it was just like a really great like step into like the lord's like heart and like what he kind of is calling me for and then i went on to fan into flame that we have uh in the svo community um which is a retreat for those wondering yeah it's a retreat it's holy spirit based Mm -hmm. and i didn't realize until i went to the retreat that i didn't really have a relationship with the holy spirit either Mm -hmm. and he was like calling me and i was like all right let's do this well (laughs) it was a great retreat I got wrecked, like emotionally, spiritually wrecked. I like one moment was just broke down sobbing in front of so many people, like mm-hmm. having to like physically try to like denounce all these lies that like I've been being fed by this like culture that we have mm-hmm. that permeates like every mm-hmm. single aspect of our lives. And I realized like it has such a hold on my heart that I couldn't physically say these like lies. I can say like I renounce this thing and like I give it to the Lord. Like I couldn't physically say it for like And I had to like try because it was that scary and that was hard. And I realized this is where the Holy Spirit needs to be. And it was like really starting to like unite my heart into this idea and accepting like the Trinity, like fully, you know, it's such hard thing sometimes to like think of like the Godhead, like three in one, like the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a great mystery. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I like have to accept like, I'm never going to understand it. And like, that's one of the most beautiful things too. It's like, I don't have to. And like the Lord has got me like, regardless of me, like trying to figure out who he is and what he is. Like, that's the thing he's like outside of like our minds and everything. Like, it's just like crazy and it's intense. And I was starting to realize that like the Lord like created me in such a way that like, it's beautiful and it's glorifying and it's like one of the many many ways that he himself is and who he will be and who he is like will be forever and who he was Mm -hmm. and it's like i am just such an individual part of that love and who he is and that identity and like having to learn like oh my gosh like i am his beloved because i am so much from him that he could not like hate himself because he is the lord like in a way yeah so it was like all like a mind meld like whoosh oh my all gosh at once. it's just like crazy and so i was like all right um and so i just started taking slow steps and my daily prayer life was still wasn't like good but i was like all right let's like figure this out and i had this call to apply uh to the household program with an spo so living in community so basically like having two household dinners a week like doing morning prayer at 6 a.m i'm not a morning person and <laughs> i was like all Oof. right let's do this and like throwing myself into it because i was like the only way i'm going to be able to like get into this community and like not even community like get myself into this mindset of surrounding my life solely for the lord and like glorifying every single aspect like washing dishes it's for the Lord and it's to love and glorify the Lord and give that to service to him Mm -hmm. because I hate washing dishes. How do we do that? Except if I don't live it, you know, like if I don't surround myself with the people who are so intense and in love with their faith that I have to pursue that, you know, like you are part of like what people, like what you surround yourself with people, like you're influenced by like, like by everything, like how your parents will raise you, who you hang out with, like, you know, like, how you practice your faith like that just like is a lot or like what your music tastes into like what you get interested right yeah so i was like all right let's do this and i had to like come in with this new night mindset and like pray about it like these are not my god these are not my lord and this is not jesus for me and i had to like not put my friends and 
my roommates uh, on a pedestal Mm -hmm. because like we we compare ourselves so much again spirit of comparison here um on what it is to be a woman what it is to be a catholic every single day right yeah and like living or like with them. what does holiness look like we see <laughs> yeah. someone praying in the chapel and we're like oh they're so holy i should be in the chapel right now yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. like no no god it's wants like, us to be different. us mm-hmm. because we are entirely unique and yeah. created in his image and likeness and so it's i don't like, have to be someone else in the community because well they're them like i'm just a part of like who the lord is like all of us are making a part of the lord and like mm-hmm. being in that mystical like body of christ right mm-hmm. and it's something i have to rem- mar- remind myself like every day every day baby um every which is day. like my roommate uh one of my really good roommates slash best friend her name's claire hutira shout mm-hmm. out to claire <laughs> i love you um <laughs> she like had to look me in the eyes and say like let's just take today by today mm-hmm. and one of my favorite favorite bible verses i think it's like matthew um you know numbers six something it's six, 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 i'll look it up like i'll put it on my instagram if y'all yeah. really want to know <laughs> it's something it's like do not fear for tomorrow for it will take care of itself mm-hmm. you know what i'm talking about yeah and like that's always been really prevalent in my life and i'm like you know what like let me actually take this serious and like take every day as a day to glorify the lord like the breeze glorify the lord mm-hmm. you know like morning prayer if it's a little bit harder i just need to maybe paint my breviary and like get inspired and to like literally anything and everything just to glorify the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm now having a more consistent prayer life just because like I desire that, but I had to get into the habit of five minutes at least. My pastoral leader was like, start small. Yeah. My pastoral leader was like, you compare yourself to like being an hour Mm -hmm. or like an hour and a half for like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You put so much pressure on yourself that you just need to do five minutes. Mm -hmm. Just start there. You, you can't do this by yourself. You can't do this alone. It's literally grace and the Holy spirit the entire time just let yourself she goes don't do more you're not allowed to do more and i went really sarah she's like just let the lord lead you in that yeah and he is Beautiful. going to work in that yeah. um so yeah like my life has been like a series of ups and downs you know like i am not perfect i'm human uh and i'm just a woman here who is like laying herself down every single day groggily waking up at six th- six in the morning from morning you're a prayer? saint for that reason oh my god i don't know that i could do all that although it, i did do that when i was in the you convent. did a lot and and yeah. you're like such an inspiration so don't forget that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i like have to push myself like part of it is like a lot of the grace but the other part is like this is a, a relationship and like i can't expect it to be perfect like i love this analogy of and like also for my life, like I freak out about my life. Like right now I'm like, I'm an English major with an art minor. Um, that's kind of like arbitrary and weird. And like, you don't really have like a solid idea what that's going to look like. But I was like, all right, I'm at peace with this and I feel good in this. All right, let's do this. And so I had to, like this analogy of like the rowboat where you're like sitting there and the Lord can't take you anywhere if you're not moving. Mm-hmm. Like the Lord will guide you left or right. He will make crooked lines straight but he's not able to like lead you to that path if you're not yeah. moving anywhere. Mm-hmm. And so I have to like get on my Harley and just kind of drive and see where like I'm headed to, you know? Um, That's awesome. So it's, it's wow. amazing and it's inspiring and it's scary, but like I'm so ready for like every single day, like every next step and to start my day off with morning prayer and with the people I love and like calling me to be better. And they call me out a lot, like, you know, and it's, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, I'm like really happy and really at peace with where I am, especially with like what's been going on in my life recently, like frustrations. And I think that's like a college student thing. Like you spend it's, it's a life like, thing. It's, yeah. It's, it's a, a life. Thing. <laughs> it's an adult thing. Yeah, I had to make a yeah. dentist appointment and I got scared and I was like, oh, okay, God, like, yeah. I guess I'm maturing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been a wild ride and I'm so excited for what is next. Wow. What a story. What a story. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mari, for sharing. And, and I think you definitely have a very relatable story. Oh, for sure. Um, there's I mean, so much this, so, there's so <laughs> much that you said that it's just like, yeah, like, I think everyone understands that. And, yeah. um, and, and yeah, so thank you for sharing because it does take a, something to, for people to agree to come on this podcast. I usually have to nudge people, but you were so willing. And so we really appreciate that. Yeah, I had to spend a little time, actually a lot of time before uh, the podcast to spend with Jesus. I was yeah. like, okay, like take over. Like it's not of me. This is not a self-glorifying thing. It's not for me to make myself part of a community or whatever, you yeah. know? It's like, 
Uh, Ultimately, it's yeah. his story. It's, it's his story it, of how yeah. he has done things in your life. Like it's part of his like love story for mm-hmm. me and his love letter like every single day. And so I'm like, all right, like I'm a book person. So like chapter one, like how are we doing this? Like where are we yeah. at right now? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and awesome. so there's so many pages left for him to kind of write. Yep. It's still being written. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for those tuning in and listening. If you would like to be on the podcast, you can go ahead and shoot me an email to podcast at txstatecatholic.org. We'll get you on the show so that way you can uh, share your story. So shoot me an email. Mari, (laughs) you look so cute today. I meant to tell you that when you sat down. Um, Thank you so much. But yes, thank you. And uh, everyone else, thank you for listening. God bless. (laughs) Bye. Bye.